Hi, I'm Sienna from The Curious Chicks and I recently completed the four-day Inca Trail to Machu Picchu in Peru and I'm very excited to be alive to tell you all of this today. I'm going to tell you about my experience so that you can decide if it's right for you. If you're thinking to yourself, I can't possibly do it, I can't do four days of hiking, three nights of camping, and I can't deal without the shower, you can do it. It's all about your mindset. So if you are determined to do this, if you're excited about doing it, you can get through it. I've seen a lot of people along the way having difficult times, having breakdowns, needing oxygen, coming back to camp hours after everyone else has, but they did it and they did it because they've determined and they kept moving and they remained positive. Obviously, if you wanna attempt to do this hike, especially a four day hike, you wanna be in relatively good physical shape. The kinds of things that you need to work on are your legs, so doing a lot of Stairmaster things. Um, cardio is good, but more of a long distance cardio. Our guides were telling us that the youngest was probably seven years old to do this hike, and the oldest was in their 70s. So it's definitely possible. You just have to prepare and get to train a little bit to get a little bit in shape. The sad part about this is if you are deathly afraid of heights, it may not be the right thing for you. There are a few areas of the trail where it's very narrow and you're up along the mountain and there's just nothing but drop down on the side. And so it could get really scary for someone that's definitely afraid of heights. Um, but I have to say that most of the trail is fairly wide and I don't think it was a problem, but you are very high and there's just you're just climbing a mountain, it's, and especially the heights that you get, it could be a big problem for some people. I went in September, which is the beginning of their spring, and it's right out of the rainy season. We still ran into a little bit of rain, but weather is pretty much unpredictable at any time of year. So up there, it's pretty much the cloud forest, and in the cloud forest, it's very cloudy, of course, the sun pops in and out as it wishes, it rains a lot, or it could snow even, and you just never know what the weather's gonna be. There's a lot of uneven stones, so you have to be very careful where you step. You have to be very strategic about where you step. If it's raining, there's definitely a lot of risk of slipping. A lot of the steps are very either very high steps or like very mini steps. So just being good about balance and placement and as long as you don't have any major knee or leg problems, you should be fine. If you're camping, you're not going to have access to showers and all of the amenities that you're used to. So you're just going to have to stick it out and accept the fact that you're going to be dirty and stinky. But that's okay because everyone else is, right? I actually looked into getting medical grade wipes for people who are bedridden. There are even no rinse shampoo caps so that you can kind of freshen your hair. They do provide you with some hot water as, when you get to camp each night to wash your hands and you can even wash your face if you want, but you only get one like, bucket of water. But I even saw a tour group that I think they had like a pop-up tent that had a showering capability in it. So that could be an option if you want to research what tour groups provide that. On the third night, at least where we camped, there was a shower, but I can't say that I would recommend it because one, it's cold water. And two, when I took a peek at the shower, it was just flooded with water. And so you would be standing in a pool of God knows what kind of water. A lot of the bathrooms at camp are the squatty type of toilets that can be really messy and stinky after a while. You definitely have to bring your own toilet paper. A lot of the times there will be a trash can in the stalls to discard your toilet paper, but sometimes there will not be, in which case it's always good to have your little trash bag handy. But just be prepared to see an accumulation of toilet paper and such in the corners of the bathroom. There's a lot of touching, so you gotta like open the door, lock the door, the flushing is the pull kind, so it's not like a foot flush, so you'll even have to touch that. And sometimes too, when you flush, there may be a back backlog of water that can kind of leak out onto your shoes. Well, there are some people that live along the trail, and they will offer bathrooms that you can use for a cost. So it generally costs one sole. That equivalates to 30-something American cents. 
And so just make sure to have some coins on hand if you do have to use a bathroom frequently. It's, or you can just use the Inca bathrooms, which means out in the open nature. There are parts of the trail that are very open and narrow where you don't really have a place to duck behind to use the restroom. In extreme cases of emergencies, you either have to be okay with people passing you and seeing that. But what I did was I brought a pee funnel as, so that women can stand and urinate. It requires a little bit of practice. I was honestly very nervous about altitude sickness. You reach over 13,500 feet in elevation, but there are the coca leaves. There are medications that you can get prescribed for that as well. Just taking care of yourself and giving yourself three days or so prior to the hike to acclimate to the altitude, drinking plenty of fluids, making sure not to drink or stay out too late, making sure you get plenty of sleep just so that your body has time to adjust. If you're someone that has a weaker immune system, I think because of the different changes in weather, lack of rest that you may get, or maybe even some of the food that you're sensitive to, it may cause people with weaker immune systems to not come out of there fully healthy. I would see someone maybe getting sick or coming down with some kind of cold or something. So just something to keep in mind. You may not get enough hours of sleep that you're used to. People are up or you just can't sleep because you're not comfortable or because it's too cold or because it's too hot. You do have some pretty early mornings, 3 a.m. or 5 a.m. depending on the day. One thing that you may not expect is to kind of be a little bit depressed on this trip. Our tour group was actually very educational about the life of a porter in sharing with us the progression of the way their working conditions have been over the years. They used to have to carry a large, large load that they would be hunched over the entire trek. And they have more recently became more regulatory about how much they're allowed to carry. So in that sense, it's been very good. The maximum weight that one porter can carry is up to 20 kilograms, which equals to about 44 pounds. So they work 24-7 across the four days and they really only make 40 American dollars in tips. But that is acceptable and what they recommended. They solely, like, mainly rely on tips as their source of income and these porters live very far from home and they actually kind of dorm all the porters in these this big room of bunk beds. And so they're away from their families most of the year. They maybe only see them three to four times a year. They have to work through holidays. I kind of just felt a little bit guilty being on this trip and having them carry my stuff. It was just something that I wasn't expecting to feel while I was going on this like once in a lifetime adventure. One thing that I was really surprised to find was that there was barely any wildlife there. You would think that you're surrounded by all this nature, it's a very untapped kind of natural resource. And We did see alpacas, llamas, some cows, some horses, and some donkeys. I didn't really see a lot of them to be honest. And one little interesting fact is that llamas and alpacas are not natural to that area they are actually placed there by the government for tourism. There aren't like big scary bugs like you would think because you're going into like forest and mountain and all that. There are sand flies and so sand flies are like super super tiny and you think that they're little gnats and they're not going to do anything but they will. They will bite you and they're very itchy and some people get really bad reactions to them. They weren't following us around all day every day but there were parts of the trail that they were like prevalent, very prevalent and maybe I think it has to do with the weather and maybe also the time of the day. The tour companies will provide you with water on most of the days. The only day that we needed to provide our own water was on the first day prior to the first lunch. And from there on out, they provided you with boiling water to replenish your water bottles and your water bladders. So expect that you'll have plenty of water throughout your trek, but it isn't going to be bottled water. Be very, very careful where you step. There is lots of poopies along the way and poopies would look like coffee beans, perfectly rounded to the same size and a lot of them. And those aren't coffee beans, that's alpaca poop. So just be careful not to step in those. You have to remember that it's not a race. Everyone should just go at their own pace and a lot of times you'll notice that you're gonna leapfrog people. Machu Picchu is not gonna go anywhere. Don't feel like you need to prove anything to yourself or anyone else and just take it easy so you don't overwork yourself and you don't burn yourself out too quickly. 
I hope that in sharing some of my experiences and some tips that I've picked up will be helpful to you and maybe you'll decide that it's right for you and maybe you decide that it's, that it's not right for you. But just also keep in mind that there are other alternatives to get to Machu Picchu. There are two-day hikes. There's also the train that you can take. There are a lot of rumors that it's going to be shut down one day and I do think that that could be true. I'm very fortunate that I was able to hike there and see a lot of it pretty much untouched and go up to it and, and see every part of Machu Picchu but I think that one day that could easily be different where they would rope a lot of that off and you would have to see it in a distance. Have fun, it's going to be an amazing adventure I promise. So if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we'll be back with more videos about travels and adventures all over the world.